Hello, Redling. Mrs. Van Sickle here with this week's first Chapter Friday book selection, Undefeated by Stephen Scheinkin. This nonfiction book takes place in the early 1900s and it is about one of the greatest all around athletes in the world, Jim Thorpe. He won two Olympic gold medals in track and field, and he was a professional baseball, basketball, and football player. He has set scores of records that stood for decades and is widely regarded as the best athlete in American history. So why isn't Jim Thorpe's name more commonly known given all that he has accomplished? Because he was a Native American, born of the Sac and Fox Indian Nation. And sadly, this was at a time in American history where minorities' achievements did not receive their proper recognition. But what I find so inspirational about this book is that Jim Thorpe never allowed to be defeated by societal norms. Thus the title, Undefeated. It is a great read for sixth grade and up. Give it a shot. Listening Library presents Undefeated, Jim Thorpe and the Carlisle Indian Football Team by Steve Scheinkin. Read for you by Mark Bramhall. tryout. Jim Thorpe looked ridiculous, and he knew it, like a scarecrow dressed for football, he'd later say. The borrowed pants barely reached his knees, the grass-stained jersey hung loose on his lanky frame, the cleats were coming apart. He walked out to Indian Field anyway. Football practice had already begun, and about 30 athletes in their teens and early 20s were loosening up. The head coach, Pop Warner, stood watching. Warner was a big man with a square block of a head, a whistle on a string around his neck, a cigarette dangling from the corner of his mouth. He saw the scarecrow coming. What do you think you're doing out here? I want to play football, Thorpe said. The players stopped and looked. A few laughed. Warner was not laughing. I'm only going to tell you once, Jim. Go back to the locker room and take that uniform off. You're my most valuable track man, and I don't want you to get hurt playing football. Thorpe had expected as much from Warner, who also coached the track team. At 19, Thorpe owned pretty much every running and jumping record at the Carlisle Indian Industrial School. Just under six feet tall, muscular but thin, he was built for speed. But he loved football, too. And besides, he despised being told there was something he couldn't do. I want to play football, he said again. Again, Warner told him to take a hike. With less than two weeks to get his team ready for the 1907 college football season, the coach had no time for nonsense. But Thorpe would not leave the field. All right, Warner finally grunted. If this is what you want, go out there and give my varsity boys a little tackling practice. He tossed Thorpe a football. And believe me, that's all you'll be to them. Thorpe caught the ball and held it, running his fingers over the leather and laces of a store-bought football for the first time in his life. He tucked the ball under his arm, walked to one of the chalk goal lines, turned, and studied the field. There in front of him was the famous Carlisle School football team, a diverse group of Native Americans from all over the country. There was the team he'd been hearing about, dreaming about since he was a kid. The players were spread out on the grass, maybe five feet between each man. There was no chance for a runner to get very far. That was the point. This was a tackling exercise. Warner shouted for Thorpe to begin. He started forward. The first few defenders got low and grabbed for his legs. Thorpe spun free and continued. Another group dove at him. He lifted his knees high and churned through outstretched arms. Picking up his pace, he faked out the next few tacklers. Then, with a bit of open field around him, he turned on his sprinter's speed and was gone. A cigarette fell from the corner of Pop Warner's open mouth. 
After crossing the goal line, Thorpe circled back to the coach. A huge grin on his face, he tossed Warner the football. I gave them some good practice, right, Pop? Warner's coaching assistant was smiling, too. You're supposed to let them tackle you, Jim, he said. The man was kidding, but Thorpe thought he was being laughed at. His smile vanished. He said, nobody's going to tackle Jim. Warner's square face flushed raw beef red. He slammed the ball back into Thorpe's chest. Well, let's see if you can do it again, kid. And to his team, he yelled, get mean out there. Smack him down. Hit him so hard he doesn't get up. Who does he think he is? This isn't a track meet. This is football. Hit, hit, hit. Pop lit a new cigarette. Thorpe walked back to the goal line. And then he ran through the whole team again. He twisted through tackles and shoved defenders out of the way, faking some guys out and flat out blowing by others. It was a combination of power, agility, and speed Pop Warner had never seen in one player and never would again. Thorpe jogged back to Warner. No grin this time. He tossed the coach the ball. Sorry, Pop, he said. Nobody's going to tackle Jim. Jim.